Hey, welcome back to another Touch Designer tutorial. So today, I'm going to be showing you how to generate videos using Stable Diffusion. And then we'll take those videos and turn them into an audio reactive particle system like this. If you haven't seen my previous tutorial on using Compute Renderer, definitely go check that out. I do a deep dive on how to get this set up. The Compute Render component and everything from the previous video is free and available, but the project file from today is going to be available on my Patreon. That being said, you can build all these from off-the-shelf pieces using Touch Designer. So if you want to save yourself some time, definitely check that out in the Patreon, and I'll put a link to that in the description. For now, I'm going to show you how to use this component. So this is going to be the same project file from the other one, but I've tacked in these two extra pieces here. So this section is set up to be able to record a video that will seamlessly transition between the different images that you create using Compute Render. So I'm going to do a quick overview of that. Basically, all this does is anytime a new image is generated, it's going to save that, and then it'll crossfade between those. While that animation is taking place, it'll save new frames to this video. The other thing that's super important here is that when it's on image to image mode, it will generate very similar images if your input image varies ever so slightly. So what I've done here is when you're recording, I have this noise component set up to just change ever so slightly between frames. And that way when you're recording, you'll start to get images that look fairly similar and will kind of blend together, which makes it look more like a film. All right, well, let's go ahead and see what this looks like in action. First thing to do is just go to the movie file out here. Go ahead and give it a name and path to wherever you'd like to save it. I'm going to call it animation 10. And then when you turn record on, I set this up to automatically start incrementing our noise function over here. And then it, what will happen is that the second that this finishes rendering out a new image, it will move on to the next one and keep generating in, indefinitely until you turn record off. So let's go ahead and toggle it. It's generating an image. Set this as our background so we can see what it's making. Make sure that your project's not paused. And there we go. It's going to keep generating new frames for us. And right now, this is getting saved into the video. And what's exciting is that you can actually change the prompt and the parameters on the fly. And this is a really interesting way of kind of changing the direction of the animation as it continues to progress. So what I like to do here is maybe we'll maybe we'll switch up the prompt. So we'll change this instead of it being particles, clouds, orb, a couple other extra things in there. I'll put in um, ocean underwater, comma. And if I click off of it, it'll update. Now we'll start to get some more ocean elements. Maybe uh, the underwater prompt is probably clashing with the clouds. So I'll delete the clouds and orb glow parameters. So hopefully we can kind of start to get some more water, underwater type scenes. Maybe we'll put in a um, coral. Very cool. And yeah, you can definitely play around with all these parameters as well. So you can change the iterations, guidance, and all that good stuff. So once we have this at a point that's good enough, then we can go ahead and turn off record. And we can use this in our animation down here. So this is just a movie file in. So go ahead and snag this video that we just created. I think we call it the animation 10. And all we're doing here is we're basically just driving the index of the video using some audio analysis. And then what we're doing is we're piping it through a particle system and then using the motion from the input image to drive the particle system and then add some feedback to it. All right, so I'm going to turn this off the background and then. I'm going to reset our 
feedback over here. I have the particle GPU turned off by default just so that it doesn't take up extra computation while you're running the rest of the project. Then if we turn this on, you might need to hit one on the keyboard to reset it. And you should start to see some particles coming through. If we change the feedback here, you, know, you can change the opacity. This kind of fills everything in for us, but you should be able to see the, your video playing back with audio reactivity in your particle system. So the main thing to do here is take this audio device in and you can swap this out with whatever song you want. When you do bring in another song, make sure in this movie file out over here that you're dragging the audio file into it. Um, you can just drag and drop this chop onto the name here so that when you record a video, uh, you get your audio output. And the main thing that's going on here, I have a, a new technique that I really like doing for audio analysis. So the main thing that I'm doing here is I have the um, audio analysis component from the palette. What I really like doing now is snagging the low, mid, and high. And I'll take the slope of those. So basically, I'm getting the change in the lows, mids, and highs. And I'll turn those into a value that are positive. And then I'm basically just getting a, like an average of the lows, mids, and highs and the direct change in them. And I find it actually gives me a pretty, pretty direct change for a lot of elements in the song. So it'll generally give back changes for like the kick and snare, hi-hat, things like that. So we're taking that value and I'm continuously counting up for it. Um, there's one one extra little piece in here where I'm I'm using this speed component and anytime an input value changes, it just it just continues to add that to the previous value. So we're passing in this audio analysis slope into the index of the video and I had to scale it up a little bit um, just to be able to match the speed that I want it to progress the video. And this is something that you can play around with. So depending on your song, you may want to slow it down or speed it up. It's going to totally depend on how reactive you want the, uh, the video to cycle through, depending on the audio analysis. But in general, I found this to be pretty snappy. Um, other things that can be fun to play around with uh, if you go into the settings here, I've tacked up this force parameter. And so this will determine how much movement you're getting from the particles, so how much force is being applied from the motion while these are changing. So if I tone it down a lot, there's going to be more subtle motion. And then if I really ramp up the force, um, you'll start to get a lot more motion out of the particles. And you can set this, you can set this really high as well. And these will change quite a bit. Um, you know, it can kind of get a little chaotic. And another thing that can be fun to play around with as well is the actual particles GPU component. So this is the new, this is the new particles GPU component that Touch Designer released in TD 2022. So maybe you want to play around with the particle size. You could make them larger. You can make them smaller. You can play around with the birth rate of the particles, uh, the forces, things like that. Right now, what we're doing is we're actually just using the color values as the input for the force. So you could swap this out for anything that you want. Like here, we could, oh, that's the color. <laughs> we could swap this out for the forces. And then now you'll get the motion from this noise function driving the motion of the particle system. And that's actually what this second parameter is right here. Notice uh, if you hover over it, it'll say motion. So I did set this up so you can kind of you can kind of play around with it and add some variety. So if if we add in like a if we add a noise component and we change this. And let's animate it real quick. So I'll go into the transform, put in abs time dot seconds times 0.1. And then let's also turn off monochrome so that way we get variation. And if you plug this in, you'll start to get some finer grain motion. And what you could do is if you change the period of the noise, notice how it kind of scales in and out. You could use something like this to just add in random motion into the video. 
And if you take your offset and tone it down and then take your amplitude and tone it way, 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 way down, um, you'll start to get very subtle motion. And then you can start to ramp it back up. But I really like taking the actual video and using those to generate the um, the motion for the particle system. I just think that it, it gives it a, a interesting aesthetic. I feel like you you end up getting the individual you end up getting like motion coming from those individual pixels. I think the last thing here is just uh, setting it up to record. So literally just turn on record. Make sure that you have real time turned off when you're running something like, like this to record your video. Um, and yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. One main thing to remember is that this audio reactive video playback system with particles is not limited to just this stable diffusion setup. So I'm really excited to see what other things that you can link this up to. And I'd love to see what you make using the setup. So keep me posted. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks again, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.